For card show number 39 this year, I am flying up to Boston for the best flipping card show. This show is ran by two different YouTubers, Bowman1951 and Filmington. I'm super excited to visit Massachusetts for the first time for both the cards and the food. the Crown Plaza for the best flipping card show. Let's see what's inside. I thought this was a very well run and organized local card show. Here you can find a little bit of mixture of everything. So as you see on the screen right here, there's some football autographs on jerseys and helmets. There's also some pucks and single photo autographs. Around the show, there's a little bit of everything. Here's some Marvel cards. And I feel like as a local show, this was the first one that properly had every single sport represented. There's people there selling hockey cards, there's a soccer dealer, and there is obviously your normal baseball, football, and basketball, both low end and high end, like this dual autograph of Brady and Gronk. Hey, you gotta respect. First deal of the day with Barden's cards. I got four jersey cards. Got the Frank Robinson patch. I got a Hank Greenberg bat card. Lied about the four, it's actually three. I got a Joe Maurer rookie card. And I got a Warren Spawn jersey. Love the vintage jersey cards. I have a full collection of them and I pick them up at shows when they're cheap. All right, so why I like older jersey cards? First off, the jersey cards in the 2000s were all game used. You look at jerseys today, like this Lamelo Ball, it's not even game used, it's player worn. And half the time, we don't even know what that exactly means. The other thing behind it is these older jerseys, players used to wear these for multiple games. Uh, they wouldn't have a new jersey every single game. In fact, they'd only have a few jerseys for a season. So you know that these were used for quite a while. Plus with players like these, they're always gonna be remembered in the game. Warren Spawn is probably your greatest left-hand pitcher of all time. And Frank Robinson is one of the best hitters. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Um, nothing. That's what I'm saying. Oh, what do you mean, Laura? I think like, oh, is it like ranked by like how? Like here with my friend Alex, we've actually found a card for his collection. He's going out here getting the top 75 NBA autographs for the NBA 75th anniversary. Almost done with the set from the first 50. Now working on the modern 25 players as the addition. So Alex, you want to talk about your PC a little bit? I've been collecting signed rookies for almost a decade now. It all started with uh, this one here, Bill Russell. Met him in person um, over a decade ago, got it signed. From there, started the chase, wanted to get a signed rookie of all the greatest NBA players. Now, we've got most of them, and thanks to Ryan and Steven's help, have been picking up a few more. Now, the NBA is announcing the next 25 greatest in uh, October, so started pursuing the next 25, and hopefully be the first one to have all 75 signed rookies. No one else has ever done it before. So this is the 2003 LeBron James rookie signed by LeBron James. It's a pop three. If you don't know, LeBron James actually has a stake with uh, Upper Deck, so that's why it doesn't sign with Tops or Panini. And the gentleman I picked this up from, he actually met LeBron James at a McDonald's in 2004 and got it signed. And if you guys want to learn a lot more about this collection, I'm actually going to be interviewing Alex for the personal collection series I have on the channel. So be on the lookout for that in October. And make sure you give him a follow on Instagram at Hall of Fame Vintage Sports Cards. So you can see close up images of the cards, such as like this Wilt Chamberlain right here and the backstory behind getting them. $100 first, we have a Wander Franco number to 250. Wayne Wright button card and a Jazz on card auto from Clearly Authentic. Let's keep on going. Beantown Hobby is gonna talk about how he sets up at a local card show. Hey guys, so what we do is there's no graded whatsoever. At a show like this, we want everything to look the same, everything uniform. So everything is branded with our logo Okay, in one touches. And if it's a numbered card, it's obviously glorified by a different color sticker. Everything is checked for comps the night before. 
So you'd never have to ask us what's the last comp. Our price is usually less and we rotate. We want to change our inventory. So what we do is right now because of the NFL, it's all Tom Brady. So we put away our Jordans and our Kobe's and our LeBron's. They'll be back in two months and they will be probably replaced by baseball. Uh, so you'll have football and basketball, a little bit of hockey mixed in, and then in the spring baseball will come back. So we're constantly rotating with the actual you know, NFL, NBA seasons. Two quick pickups, I have a Juan Soto right here, which is numbered to 125. And I got this Austin Riley Topps Chrome rookie card thrown in. For today's trivia question, what players hit the most home runs in MLB history before their 21st birthday? Is it A, Tony Canigliaro, B, Juan Soto, C, Mel Ott, D, Alex Rodriguez? Make sure to comment your answer down below. All right, guys, we're here with Filmington, lives over in the Boston area. So what's the show scene over here in the Northeast? The show scene's pretty good. It's evolved a lot, though. Biggest shows in the Boston area used to be at Shriners, and we've just seen one of them come back the first time uh, it was done in about two and a half years, and it wasn't as well promoted. I think they relied on a lot of the older people in the hobby, but now the, the Causeway show that's done by Costas Cards, I think that's kind of overtaken it. It's like the Boston show. Now, I think they're having their third or fourth show that's going to be in October. It's usually either one or two days, and it's right downtown, right at uh, you know the TD Garden where the Celtics and Bruins play. So, yeah, the next one's October. This one we've been doing for about five or six months now, and this has been actually really, really good for a monthly show. Uh, there's another show in Woburn, too, that I used to do that's weekly. Other than that, the Shriner shows, the Cosplay show, and this one, there's what is now the Dedham show. It used to be in Mansfield over by where the Patriots play, Gillette Stadium. Now it's in Dedham. I don't know if that's a permanent arrangement, but that's something they've been doing after COVID. And that's also a very good show. That is, I think they have like, it's like once a month um, following holidays, like Columbus Day, Memorial Day. So it's either usually on Mondays or Sundays, I believe. That's also a, a, what I consider a very good show. So definitely no shortage of shows if you deviate away from the Boston area a little bit. You go up to New Hampshire. The Dover show is also very good. I think that's probably monthly. So we're here with Jeff Bowman, 1951 on YouTube. I actually put together this show that you guys saw today in the vlog. So can you tell me a little bit about the origin story and where you see this show going towards in the future? Yeah, sure. So back in the late 80s, early 90s, I always went with my dad to shows and was, I always love card shows. It's been 30 years or so since I've been going to them. Came out of the pandemic and there's nobody doing Saturday morning shows around here and I was like, we, we gotta start one up. Got a bunch of guys together, figured all my social media channels, I could find enough dealers and it just came together pretty quickly. It's been very successful and I'm loving every minute of it. Love card shows like Ryan does here. I'm a big fan of his channel just for that very reason and just- They're addictive guys. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Go find a local card show if you can. Like, they're just so much fun. The social interaction is my favorite part of the whole hobby. Channel. So you also build out a bunch of content and you know, talk about the whole story about building out the 1951 set. I got into the hobby again about five years ago and I was like, what is the most iconic baseball card set out there? And I was like, I never collected 51 Bowmans. And I just decided to name myself that. I was gonna focus on that, hyper focus. I'm gonna finish a PSA graded set. Still have the mantle left, but I've got pretty much every other key card in there and a bunch of comments I still need to put together. About close to half done now. It's been four or five years. I figured it was gonna take me 10 in total to get, even get the mantle in there. So it's been a fun run and um, I, I'm now into a lot more modern. At back then, I didn't expect this like, you know, this explosion of modern cards and, and how it's turned out to be. I loved vintage then, but I'm kind of doing both now and I, and I like that where I'm at now. Awesome. Well, guys, make sure to check out his channel, Bowman1951, also Twitter and Instagram. Put together this awesome show. And if you're in the Northeast, make sure to check out this local show because there's a ton of fun. All right, guys, TJ is here, and we're about to explore downtown Boston. Austin's best pizza at Regina. Super excited for this one. Original location, by the way. One bite. Delicious. Right. 
kick us off. This looks really good. I took two bites. <laughs> Must be really good. Yes, sir. Hanging in Boston. This is really good. Got the goods. Let's do it. Got a little shoot on out here. Open it up and bang, baby. Power sugar and everything. Check it out. What's going on, IG? Let's go ahead. Three. All right, guys, so it's 1146. I'm getting ready real quick for Jeremy's live stream for Sports Card Live. If you guys haven't watched the episode, by the time this is published, it's already out there, so make sure to check that out. We're going to be talking a lot about card shows and everything, so you can guys see a little bit behind the scenes right now. Can I kind of show them? So you can kind of see how this all works. So just waiting for Jeremy, he's finishing up with card score and then we're gonna be doing this. You flip modern cards to buy into vintage cards. So I go in there, I try to find modern plays or different modern cards that I think are undervalued and will go up over time and I'll leverage those cards to trade. So like last week's at Collector's Con, I ended up trading up for a Roy Campanella rookie that was a CSG7. I vlogged the card show this morning and then explored Boston and I gotta say the food in Boston, it was really good. Nice. I saw you I saw earlier on Instagram you were about to do a pizza review. How was the pizza? <laughs> it, it was phenomenal, man. Like That's you you got you got you gotta get pizza up here. I like a greasy thin crust pizza. You, you need to, you need to try the you need to try Regina's over here. You'd be in heaven. The funny thing is that I believe he's being sarcastic here. <laughs> I think Burns is being sarcastic. I hope he is, but you never know. I mean, a lot of people would prefer a Justin Herbert parallel on 149 to a Frank Robinson, right? It, there are people who, that would prefer that. And I can understand it, but, but you know, to five, ten years down the road, if you're looking out that far, you're going to want the Frank Robinson probably, I would think. And all right, guys, that is a wrap for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed Boston and the flipping card show. Enjoy it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And in next week's episode, I'm either going to be going to two card shows in Florida or I'm going to be back up in the Northeast in Rhode Island. Still figuring out details right now, but I'll catch you in that video. Mm -hmm.